Wait, did you know that I don't need to introduce myself no. on the channel anymore? Really? Yeah. That's oh. why I don't do it anymore. Oh, you're Bec kind of a big deal. Well, no, because I'm either like Super Mario or Shrek or like some someone with a moustache. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Does Shrek have a moustache? Uh, he could when he's doing Movember. I'm sick of being teased. And speaking of teasing, Intel teased the i9-9900KS a little earlier in the year and they said it would boast an all-core boost frequency of around 5 GHz. So we decided that instead of doing benchmarks at 720p to see how many frames a CPU can push that, we would do it the way we always do it, to show the performance at real resolutions, with real settings, matched with real GPUs people would most likely pair with an i9-9900KS. And not only that though, we would see how the 9900KS compares to the i9-9900K, and both the 3700X and the 3800X, since the 3700X and the 3800X are are kind of like AMD's answers to the 9900K and the 9900KS. Now we're only looking at 8 core 16 threaded CPUs, not 10 core CPUs, not 12 core CPUs. This is an 8 core CPU showdown. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's see who's the best. Okay, let's, let's kick this off. Let's be honest. All the chips that we're looking at in this video are all relatively expensive, so we wanted to pair them with GPUs that would match the use case for these CPUs. We used two of Nvidia's highest offerings, the RTX 2080 Super and the 2080 Ti, and AMD's top dog, the 5700 XT. Now we spent a considerable amount of time testing all of this, and there's a lot of data to unpack. So. Be patient and let's get the ball rolling. Let's start off by getting the biggest thing out of the way, the pricing. Now all the pricing info that we've got and all the pricing that we're gonna discuss from here on out will be in Australian dollars since that's usually the data that's provided to us. And with that said, the i9-9900KS comes in at around about 900 Australian dollars, give or take, or around 600 US dollars, which is around the same Australian price as the launch price for the 9900K. The prices are always subject to change post-launch, but yeah, those are the figures that were provided to us pre-launch. Now, we decided that we'd make the testing standardized for comparison with other tests we do on the channel, and so that if you wanted to jump back to any of our other videos where we do this stuff, you can see how the 9900KS stacks up. We used one kit of RAM for all the CPU-based testing, so there was no discrepancies with latency and timing. We went with the new Team Group Vulcan Z16 gig kit at 3600 megahertz with the XMP profile enabled. We didn't overclock the chips at all because we wanted to know what the out of the box figures were. All the other figures from all the other CPUs we tested were also out of the box as well. And we do this because there is a vast majority of people who don't overclock and I'm one of those people too. I don't bother with that stuff, I'll be honest. Okay, that's just me, agree with it if you want. I don't care. Now all the boards that we're running for all of these tests are all running the latest BIOS versions and all the GPU drivers are current as of the 26th of October 2019. We decided to go with Gigabyte for our testing since we only have X570 and Z390 boards from them at the moment so they were kind of a good match and we're not, like I said, we're not doing any overclocking at all since yeah, we, we don't know how well this chip overclocks. We haven't had enough time with the chip. So yeah, we didn't determine that. But we might address it in the future. But for now, everything in this video is how it is out of the box. I just wanted to say that again so I can really drill it into your head. Okay, let's start off with what everyone wants to know, the Cinebench performance. Now, we tested with both Cinebench R15 and R20. We have some historical data with Cinebench R15 that we collected as well, but for now, let's talk about Cinebench R20. All of these chips are chips that we have on hand and we only test stuff that we've actually got. We only tested multi-threaded performance since that's what these chips are designed for. So let's see what happened. From our testing in Cinebench R20, it's immediately clear that the 9900KS is much faster than the 9900K. It scores around 9% higher than the 9900K, around 4% higher than the 3800X, and around 9% higher than the 3700X in Cinebench R20. So with that said, let's move on to Cinebench R15. Yeah. 
Again, similar results are echoed with R15 as well. The 9900KS scores are around 8% higher than the 9900K, 5% higher than the 3700X, and only half a percent higher than the 3800X which is um, pretty interesting, and yeah, they're, they're very interesting results in general. The margins between the 9900K and KS are the ones that really surprised me. We ran these tests around 20 times per chip, and yeah, we saw these exact differences every single time. The 9900KS is faster, but you'd want it to be faster because it's got a five gigahertz boost clock. Okay, so now we know the 9900KS is faster than all the other chips for multi-threaded workloads, but how does that stack paired up with some high-end GPUs? As I mentioned earlier, we tested with the 2080 Super, the 2080 Ti, and the 5700 XT. We always run these three benchmarks because they use the CPU and the GPU in different ways, and also because they're benchmarks, which means the testing parameters are repeatable. Now, we don't do gameplay testing because that type of testing is beyond inconsistent, and it doesn't actually give you a good indication of expected performance. If you ran these tests on your own machine, the same ones that we do here, you could theoretically use it for comparison for your own stuff. And with all that said, let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. This benchmark's built into the game and gives us a good indication of how the game will perform on your system. And from the crazy amount of testing we've done with this benchmark, we know that this benchmark is highly influenced by the CPU. So let's see what happened. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed our three regular tests of 4K optimized, a customized 1440p preset with motion blur and depth of field disabled, and 1080p extreme. So let's see how the 9900KS did. of tests is with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. This is an updated version of the tool with a lot more optimizations to make this a much more accurate benchmarking tool.
few conclusions from the i9-9900KS. One conclusion is, if you've already got a 9900K, don't upgrade. It's a waste of money. It's just not worth it. But if you're building a new machine for a high performance gaming PC or a productivity machine, the 9900KS should be on your list of CPUs to consider. But at the same time, so should the 3700X and the 3800X. For a new machine for video editing, the 9900KS is, it's, it's gonna be my pick. And the reason why it's got that high boost frequency of five gigahertz and Intel QuickSync, which is, yeah, really helpful for those workloads. For music production though, your CPU never matters. So it doesn't really matter for that use case. Trust me, I know, I make all the music here. Another conclusion is, if you're really, really set on buying the 9900KS for gaming, I'd personally still go for the 9900K or the 3700X. And I know people are gonna disagree with me, but the price difference doesn't justify a few hundred megahertz unless you really want those five gigahertz bragging rights. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's really worth it. Sure, the 9900KS is faster, but also most people who were buying these higher end CPUs for gaming from our experience, from your feedback, and a survey that we ran in our Discord with people who own 9900Ks, 3700Xs, and 3800Xs, determined that people with those higher end chips are playing games at 1440p and above which on its own is very GPU bound anyways. The final conclusion is the value proposition. Realistically, you're paying more money for more performance, but how much more is it actually worth? That should be the deciding factor. For me, the extra money just isn't worth it. For you, it, it could be worth it. I mean, if you're saving time for productivity-based workloads, yeah, okay, I can see the value there. But for gaming, it's completely negligible. You have to remember, the 9900KS is the end of a generation. And we know that because 10th gen's been announced and it's coming, right? The 9900KS isn't for everyone, but in the same breath, it's for those select few who want a guaranteed five gigahertz all core boost out of the box. And for those people, it's perfect. Let us know what you think. Now, I wanted to close this video out by chatting about the age old AMD versus Intel battle. And I can already see the comments saying stuff like, Intel is trash or AMD is trash. Who cares? Get over it. People are allowed to like things. Now, I've had these discussions with people in our Discord and I have this conversation almost every day with AMD versus Intel. And the truth is, just buy what you want. If you're set on Intel, go for Intel. If you're set on AMD, go for AMD. Simple as that. Both have their merits and both have their pitfalls. Either way, you're gonna spend money on something. However you choose to spend your money is completely up to you. No one should judge you for how you spend your own money. Just don't pick RGB over performance. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you do not like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And let us know what you think of the 9900KS. Uh, it's it, it feels like a, a binned 9900K to me. That's just how I feel about it. But five gigahertz all core, it's, it's, it's impressive, but it's not amazing. Yeah, I don't know. People are gonna hate whatever I say anyway. So yeah, I'm always wrong, regardless of how we do these videos. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.